Hi, everybody. So this is the uh, video where we're going to begin looking at how you identify and understand uh, and find in a catalog examples of Roman denarii. And these are the most important silver coins for the later part of the Roman Republic and the first two and a half centuries or so of the Roman Empire. Uh, to begin, we have to start, of course, in the Roman Republic when the denarius is created. So the backstory to the creation of the denarius is the invasion of Italy by Hannibal. And in the 210s, uh, the later 210s, the Roman Republic suffers a really serious set of political, economic and military crises. And part of this requires them to reform their currency. And they go away from a currency that is based very heavily on large bronze coins, and they create silver coins. And the denarius is the beginning of this. So the denarius literally means 10 osses. Uh, os was the basis of that Roman bronze monetary system. And so the denarius is something that holds a lot more value than a single os, even though it's a much smaller coin. This is, of course, because silver is much more valuable than bronze. Uh, also, I think we can understand that the Roman war effort probably required quite a bit of bronze, and this meant it was difficult for that bronze to remain in circulation while the war was going on. So you have a Roman denarius from the Roman Republic. How do you find this thing? So this is the Bible for Roman Republican coins. It's called Roman Republican Coinage. It's by Michael Crawford. This is something that's used by both scholars and collectors. So if you are a collector of Roman Republican coinage, you'll be using Crawford to identify your coins. If you're a scholar working on Roman Republican coinage, you'll also be using Crawford. This is far and away the best uh, example of a book that you can have for using these particular pieces of historical evidence. Um, Crawford does a couple of things. I mean, actually does more than a couple of things. Uh, what Crawford does is it catalogs these coins and organizes them chronologically. But Crawford is also an excellent scholar. And so what Crawford does when he catalogs these things is he also talks about why the coins have the appearance that they do and what the iconography means on them. So, you know, why did this particular coin look the way that it did? Why does it have these particular images? Why does it have these particular um uh, uh, legends, and the legend is just the, the words that are written on the side of the coin. So Crawford is your, your starting point. Um, so you have Crawford. So what do we do now? So when we're looking at a coin, these are some of the basics for looking at a, a Roman coin. The obverse of the coin is the front of the coin. What we would say uh, in a modern context is the head, right? So if you're flipping the coin, you have the head and the tail. The head is the obverse. The tail is the reverse. So this is one of my absolute favorite coins. It's a coin issued um, by a money or uh, around the year 100 BC. And on the front, you have an, uh, an image of, of Roma. It's a very beautiful coin. Uh, and on the reverse, you have an image of one of the ancestors of the money or who issued this coin fighting in a battle. Uh, but the coin is, is just striking. It's beautiful. Now, the type, when you see a current, when you see a catalog refer to the coin type, what that does is it basically is a reference to the images of the coin. Um, and so on this, you would see one type is Roma. The other type is this fighting scene, um, warriors, two warriors fighting with a fallen soldier on the ground. The other thing that's really important for Republican coins and particularly Republican denarii is the moneyer. So again, if we look at the reverse of this coin, the tail side or the back of the coin, what we see is uh, the name of the money or Quintus, Thermius, I think Minucius Phoenix, Felix. Um, and so this is the person who in the Roman Republic is responsible for the design of the coin. And in the Republic, there are three money each year. They're given an assignment for how much money they issue. Um, and each of them is responsible for issuing those coins. Now, initially what the money did was they basically regulated the quality of the coins. And so they personally put their name on it because they were responsible for any sort of deficiencies in the coin. But by the middle part of the second century BC, these moneyers realize that they actually have quite a bit of control over the images on the coins. And so they start issuing these coins in a way that, that enhances their own public profile. So they're issuing coins that have a particular message about who they are and why they're important. So this moneyer, um, 
Quintus Thermius um, Minutius, he, he's issuing a coin that has this scene of his ancestor doing something heroic in a fashion that reminds you that he is descended from this person. Um, and so the money is actually quite key, both for identifying the coin, but also for understanding what exactly is going on here. Why, why would, did this person choose these images? Why did they choose this particular scenario? Why is this design here? And in some cases, um, why this is a defining feature of the way this person is going to behave publicly for the rest of their career. Okay, so. What do we do with an actual denarius? Well, this is an early denarius. This is actually um, issued in one of the first denarius issues ever. And so what you see here is uh, this is actually somewhat tricky because uh, on the front you have Roma and then behind Roma's head. So Roma with a helmet looking to the right behind Roma's head is an X. X, of course, is the Roman numeral for 10. This is a value marker. So this is just saying this is 10 denarii, this is 10 osses. So this is a denarius, quite literally. And then on the back, you have um, the Dioscori and then a label that says Roma. So in the second part of the second century BC, uh, Rome is so dominant that it doesn't need to actually stamp its coins in quite this way. And that's why the money or signature becomes more important. But in the third century BC, when Rome is literally fighting for its life against Hannibal, Roman coins circulate in a wider marketplace. And so the Roman denarius is effectively the equivalent of a Greek drachma. It's a silver coin that weighs basically the same as a drachma. And so the stamping of Roma on this coin marks it as an issue from the city of Rome, and it allows it to circulate in a sort of wider Mediterranean economic marketplace. So this here is the, the sort of earliest iconography you see on a denarius, and this makes it kind of tricky for us to identify it because we don't have the money here. Um, and Crawford is really uh, a catalog that works best when you know the money here. So early denarii have no money or identified. So what you have to do then is go to Crawford's index. Uh, and there are a number of indices in Crawford that allow you to, to find the coin that you're looking for. But in this case, you don't have any real legend that's gonna be distinguishing. Lots and lots and lots of denarii say Roma. Lots and lots of denarii have an X on them. Um, so you have to go to something that is an index of the types. And so the index of the type, uh, this just gives you, you know, a set of images that you might look at. So if you're looking at this and you, let's just say you had a coin with an anchor on it. Well, you look in there and you see on the left column, um, you see anchors. And so those are references to the catalog numbers in Crawford. What we have here, of course, is Roma on the obverse and the Dioscoroi on the Dioscari on the reverse. So we go to the index of types and we start looking um, and we find, oh, okay, coins that have the Dioscari. Well, there's a lot of them. Um, you can see, for example, this is the entry at the very bottom of the right column, Dioscari galloping to the right. That's what we've got, but it's a standard reverse type of denarii from number 44 in the catalog all the way through number 133. So we've got quite a few types. We've got 89 different coins that might potentially have this. Uh, but once we go into it uh, and we go deeper in, we start looking through the catalog and we start seeing, okay, well, so there are Dioscoroi. Uh, we know this is a denarius because it has that X that marks it as 10, um, marks its value as 10. Uh, and then you see, okay, so we have a number 45. We have a denarius with a helmeted head of Roba. That's what we've got, a border of dots. Well, we've got that too. We've got an X behind the head. So what we have here is anonymous 45. Anonymous just means we don't know who the money or is, um, but we have catalog number 45. And then you look under 45 and you see, okay, there's three silver coins here. There's a denarius, there's a quinarius, and there's a cistercius. So the denarius has an X behind Roma's head. The quinarius, which means it's five osses, has a V. And the cistercius, uh, which means it's 2.5 osses, that has uh, an IIS, meaning two and a half. Well, we've got a 10. So we know it's a denarius. So we know that our coin is number 45.1. <clears throat> okay, so when we move deeper into the history of Roman coins in the Republic, what we can see is these get easier. 
Um, so this is a mid-2nd century denarius. And here, uh, we know it's mid-2nd century because we have a value marker that's a little bit different. This is a value marker that um, indicates uh, 16 because there's a, a re-tariffing, more or less, of the denarius. Um, but we also have now a moneyer. So if you look at this, this is a coin on the reverse that has quite a bit of information. And this is a really interesting coin we'll talk about separately um, because the iconography or the, the pictures on this are really, really cool. But um, when you look at the moneyer uh, references, so you, on the sides you have T, I, Minushi, C, F, Augurinus, and then across the top you have Roma. So it's really important to understand the Roma is not the moneyer, right? We're talking about a Roman coin. It's from Rome. Roma is the marker that this is a Roman coin. It's not part of the name of the moneyer. So when we look this up, we look for the indication of the moneyer. We know, okay, Roma is not part of it. So we've got Tiberius, Minutius, C.F. Algarinus. So we have our indication of our moneyer. And when I'm trying to identify coins, it's usually, um, I just use a piece of paper, write it out because um, it's important to, to keep your information straight. And then you go to Richardson Index to find the name of the coin by the moneyer. So our moneyer is T. Minutius C. F. Augurinus. Um, we go to the Index of Legends. And the Index of Legends is going to give us the legends, the, the things written um, on the coin. This is a key way to find your moneyer. But it also has other things in it. So, you know, Armenia Divicta, if you look at the right column in the middle, that obviously is not a moneyer. That's a reference to uh, a victory in Armenia. So that obviously um, allows us to say, OK, some of these are moneyers, some of these are something else. But in this case, Augurinus is a moneyer. So we go and we find Augurinus's name in the list of legends. And there we go. T.I. Minutius C.F. Augurini. That's our guy. Um, and we see that he only shows up once on coin number 243 in the catalog. Now you have it. You go to Crawford. You go to 243. And what you see are Augurini has issued a number of different coins. He issued a denarius. He issued a semis, which is a, um, a bronze coin. He issued a triens, also a bronze coin. This is not a bronze coin. This is a denarius. Um, and so what we see is that uh, this matches our coin. It's a helmeted head of Roma facing right. Behind it is this X symbol um, indicating the value. And then we have all of this description of the stuff that uh, appears on that coin, the column, um, two people uh, next to it, the statue atop the column, and then Roma and T.I. Minushi C.F. upwards and Augurini downwards with a border of dots. That's our coin. Okay, um, now Crawford is a great resource. If you are interested in Roman Republican coins, absolutely, you should um, invest in getting Crawford. However you get it, purchasing, um, tracking it down somehow, photocopying it from a library, this is going to be your Bible. But let's just say that you don't have Crawford, you don't have access to Crawford, you don't want to buy Crawford, uh, and you want to find some Republican coins. There is a resource that you can use. It's not as comprehensive as Crawford because it is basically a catalog of the stuff that uh, comes up for sale on coin auctions, but you can actually use this um, for the same purposes. So if you want to find a Republican coin, this is wildwinds.com. If you want to find a Republican coin, this is how you can do it. Uh, you go, you uh, go to the tab for Republican coins. You look for Republican coins by Gens. You find the name of the family or the moneyer. Uh, you look at the thumbnail images and you find your coin. Um, and so this is the process that we use to find our coin with Augurinus. There's our coin. Um, so, you know, if, if you're able to blow this up and look more closely, you can see how I did that. Um, Wildwinds is, again, a great resource, but it is not as extensive as Crawford. It doesn't have uh, rarer types. Sometimes it doesn't have the type that you're looking for. So it is not comprehensive. But uh, you can a lot of times find what you're looking for by looking at, at Wildwinds. And so it's a great resource. OK, well, that's all we've got for early Republican denarii. But we're going to keep going with this. So we're going to talk about um, coins throughout the Roman Republic and through the Roman Empire. Uh, so if you're interested in this, uh, hang tight. We'll have some more videos dropping probably um, each week talking about how to do things as a Roman historian.